Oh my goodness. This is incredible. Take 47. <laughs> hey, adventurers. Hey. I'm Jazz. And I'm Carl. And welcome back to Jazz the Adventure, where we bring you all things food, travel, theme parks, and Chicago fun. Of course, it's that time of year yes. again. Yes. We are, yesterday was 10 <sighs> days, today is nine. I'm so excited. Nine days away from HHN. 33. Opening night. 33. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait. Basically, we are excited to bring to you what we call the survival guide. Yes. Surviving Halloween Horror Nights 2024, a beginner's guide. So to kick it off, you know we have to always start with stay and scream. Yes. Stay, if you don't know and you're new to Halloween Horror Nights, Stay and Scream is basically a time where you're able to come into the parks. Yep. You separate into three different areas. Last year it was Central Park, San Francisco, and New York. Mm -hmm. And they queue you up so you're able to be some one of the first people in that hun that hunting house. Like yeah, around uh, right around the first uh, group of people. Yeah. Yeah, the first. If you plan it right. If you plan it right, pretty much. But of course, there's a few things that you need to know about this. Mm -hmm. So how do you get into Stay and Scream? So first, if you're an annual pass holder, like Chubb and myself, mm -hmm. you're able to go in there because you already have your park admission from earlier that day. All you will have to do is scan your pass for Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. If you were a daytime guest mm -hmm. and you decided to kick it in the park and extend your night all the way to two, three o'clock in the morning. Ooh, you're a trooper. We don't recommend doing that, but hey. You have the access as well. <laughs> but if you don't have, in neither one of those, pretty much your option is to buy a Scream Early ticket. Mm -hmm. So that Scream Early ticket is about $55. Yes. You can purchase it from the website. You just scan it. You probably get in around maybe two, three o'clock. Yes. And we recommend that you go straight there. There's no better bet than to go straight to the queue. Yeah, because that line, people are lining up as early as two o'clock. Yes, two o'clock, I know, hard to believe. Ugh. We learned that the hard way last year. Absolutely. Last year we decided oh, we were gonna go for a little lunch. In Cafe La Bamba and came out to a line all the way to Transformers. Yes, so, it was brutal. It was so brutal. Plan your day accordingly. You all, I like to keep it 100 with you. Yes. I'm gonna give you the pros and cons to this. Yes. So I gave you a few of the pros. You know, you get into the, you get in there first, you're first person in the house. Maybe if you're, you know, that first person in line, mm -hmm. you get to actually experience the whole event about an hour before everybody else. Yeah. But let's hit you with the cons now. So. It's some pretty big cons. Really big cons. So like we said, we recommend that you get into the line as early as 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. But the event doesn't start until 6.30. Yeah. So they're not gonna let you out that queue until about 6.00. Six, six o'clock, almost five. It was about 5.30. Some of the houses for Stay and Scream houses are uh, open as early as 5.30. Yeah. The uh, houses in the front was about 5.30. Houses in the back was like 5.45. Yeah, so pretty much imagine we went to Monsters, we stood in Central Park, and yes. we didn't get out the queue till 5.45, and we had been there since two. Two, right. So <laughs> That's three hours of standing. Standing, so stand. Good you're God. standing nonstop. Your feet are hurting. You can't get a snack because you can't leave for anything. Mm -hmm. You can't get a beverage because you can't leave for anything. And you can't go to the restroom. 
because you can't leave. Hold it. Anything. You better hold it or go beforehand. Or go beforehand. Yeah. And I recommend you just don't drink anything for about two, three hours before you get there. Well, well, I mean, they are standing in, you know, at I, the heat, so. I know, but then you don't want to also make them have to go potty. <laughs> That's true. That is so true. <laughs> like, oh my God, let us in the house. Exactly. <laughs> and then even then, you're still having to walk all the way to the back. Yes. If you were in the back of the park, you mm. you have a trek ahead of you. Yes. Those, those sprung tents that the HHN houses are in, they are all the way in the back of the lot, in the back of uh, Universal uh, Studio. So it's not right around the corner, no. no. It's a walk, it's, it's a walk. So it's a trek, put on your big girl pants, you're gonna have to it's walk. It's your big girl shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. your legs are gonna hate you because you're so tired already from just standing. Only to get to the front and get into this house yeah. to realize that you're probably about to have a bad walk through. Not wishing it on you, yeah. but there are not enough scare actors in the house in that first hour to actually give you a sufficient scare. Yeah, that's true. Because a lot of the times with a stand scream, yes, it lets you get into the houses earlier, but a lot of the actors are still putting on their makeup, they still getting dressed. So a lot of the boo holes inside of the house is not full. So mm -hmm. you could potentially have a bad walkthrough if you uh, walk through the house. Yeah, so it could it could be anything. It's yeah. kind of, it's a toss up, either or. But there's other options. You don't always have to start with stay and scream. You That's can true. also do opening scare money. So with the opening scare money, you can get there as early as we recommend two to three o'clock. Opening scare money is where the general admission opens up at six thirty. So what we've seen in years past, what was that last year, mm -hmm. um, people, so if the event starts at 6.30, just like Stay and Scream, everybody was getting to the front gate because they didn't, you know, they didn't pay the five, they didn't pay the $55. The five five. <laughs> right, the five five. <laughs> so they wanted to go ahead and wait at the very front gate before, you know, 6.30 before the event lets, you know, before the event starts. The problem with that, in order to be pretty much still get somewhat of a head start, you have to get there. We recommend, as crazy as this may sound, two to three o'clock. We've seen people as early as two o'clock, 1.30, 12. It's absolutely ridiculous. People just camp out in that one spot all day just to be one of the very few people to experience the opening ceremony and to pretty much bombard everybody just to run to the houses as soon as when the event starts. So just to give you guys, the, the opening ceremony is literally a ceremony where the icons yes. of the event step out and they show you guys what they're bringing this year yes. so everyone Bangers. everyone is standing at that gate hoping to get that first glance yeah but if you okay with not being in the front like me <laughs> scaredy pants <laughs> it's not even about the scaredy pants part it's about saving my feet yeah. i know we got a lot we got a lot in for us yes but you know, they can also, if they're staying on the resort, go to that mm -hmm. super secret hotel guest entrance. Whoop. It's kind of kitty corner in between the Hard Rock Cafe and the, yeah. what's that ride called? Rip Ride Rocket? Rip Ride Rocket. Yeah, you know, oh yes, You yes. know I can't say that ride to save my life. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so that is like literally where, you know, typically the Orlando Informer meetup starts so they will go through those same gates yeah and i'm not sure well where it will lead you but it's only open for an hour from like 6 30 to 7 30 just about mm -hmm. but you're able to probably get expedited access to the parks absolutely so take advantage of that definitely take advantage of that that is one of the most awesome benefits that you get this year from staying on the property so where do you start the back of the park. Go to the back. Go to the back, go, I'm sorry. Go to the I'm back. I'm sorry. Look, I know all the big bangers are in the front. Everybody's gonna be at the front. You yes, and like, back. please <laughs> do not make that mistake of, exactly. uh, of going to the front. No, start in the back, yes. If you go to the front, you're probably more than likely gonna have to burn your express pass early. Yes. So I, I meant to mention this part during Stay and Scream mm. about burning your express pass. Yes. But I'm gonna insert it right here. So if you go to the back of the parks, 
you're more than likely gonna be able to get through those four houses significantly faster with lower wait times and probably experience one or two scare zones yes. before the people in the front decide to finally make their, their way, way to, to the back. Yes, so that is so true. If you saved your express pass from the back, you can probably go through those houses one, one more time, time. Yep. before the end of the night. Yes. So don't be so quick to burn your express pass if you are doing stay and scream because it doesn't make sense to burn your express pass if you wait in a stay and scream at Central Park and you know you're one of the very few uh, first people to be led into the house. Save it. Do not burn it. Do not use it. Save it for later. The few, the proud, and the brave. The brave. <laughs> Because our feet are about to be brave when we take this long walk. Yes. Good so, God. I know that walk is going to be insane, yeah, and especially seeing where the especially seeing where the portals are this year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Scattered. They're really scattered in the back. Last year we went mainly through what is now DreamWorks Land. Yes. And that walk was insane, and it actually led us to having to come back to go to different portals by Men in Black. Yeah. Actually, all the portals were by Men in Black for the other three houses, pretty much. It was, it was. It was so, right by the uh, bathroom yeah. and the uh, Men in Black uh, gift shop. Yeah, so this year, the back portals are by Men in Black, Simpsons. First for Simpsons. First for Simpsons. Yes. I'm interested in seeing how that's gonna work. Yes. And there's not Boy. any anywhere near DreamWorks land. So I'm yeah. interested to see how this corralling to come back mm -hmm. from those houses is going to work. Because seeing that they have different portals, they're not going to just let us house hop like I hope that they would. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> what did what did Deadpool say? No, I made an educated wish. Educated wish. <laughs> educated wish. That's exactly what I was doing. An educated wish. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. When you're getting ready to start, you're gonna to have to hit up a few different portals and know that you're definitely going to the back. Cause I'm not gonna tell you to go to the front, I'm sorry. All the good stuff is in the front and you wanna save the best for last, in my opinion. Good point. You're going through a scare zone and, you, and if you don't wanna be bothered with the scare actors, utilize the sidewalks. The scare actors cannot come up on the sidewalk. So if you're going through Demon Queens, Swamp of the Undead, you pretty much have no choice, choice but to go through that. But Unless you go the long way. You yeah, gotta take right. the scenic yeah, route right. to avoid that. <laughs> or a torture fair. If you stay on the sidewalks, the um, HHN scare actors cannot come on the sky sidewalks and scare you. So another pro tip if you don't want to be bothered or if you just need a break from people getting all in your face and scaring you. Mm -hmm. So I am a true testament to that. Last year, I stepped off during Zodiac. Dark Zodiac. Dark Zodiac. <laughs> Insert clip here. I guess they call it Dark Zodiac for a reason because it's extremely like dark. And not just that it's like dark, but it's It's scary. It's scary. <laughs> I had to, I had to. You we were sitting down there and we were petrified. It was it was a bit much. <laughs> All at once. To me, I don't know why I always feel like that zone is this is the biggest, but it was just yes. fog. You couldn't see anything. And they would hop out like bandits in the night. Yes, trying to saw off my feet last year. <laughs> they would have succeeded if you would have not moved. I duck and rolled. <laughs> but basically, I definitely st stepped off. I needed 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I actually got that break. No one really came over there and bother bothered me. Yes. Yes. I had a good time with that. But like another way that you can beat the ride, beat the rides, beat, because I want to talk about some rides, you know, <laughs> some rides. If, sometimes if you just want to go ahead and beat the, um, you know, the rush or take a little break mm -hmm. without getting scared. You can also get on some of the rides. The Mummy is yes. going to be open. Rip Ride Rockets mm -hmm. going to be open. Gringotts? I yes. mean, how could you not get on Gringotts? And I yes. think Men in Black, too. Yes. Uh, but just uh, another pro tip that we uh, just want to make sure we don't miss anything. Some of those rides, I believe, and I could be mistaken, we mm -hmm. could be mistaken. Some of those rides close. I want to say 11.30 or midnight. Again, I could be mistaken, but 
like the Revenge of the Mummy, and I think specifically Green God's closed at around 11.30 last year. They did? So, yes, so oh. I, I don't think they are open, and again, it could be wrong, I don't think they are open the full duration of the night. I can, I can understand that, because you know, at some point, you gotta shut the ride down, yeah. put the vehicles up, mm -hmm. and Green Gods can generate a crowd. The Mummy can generate a crowd. Yes. So if you don't shut it down early, I mean, at 1 a.m., if it's still open, why not? YOLO. Mine as well. You're there to have fun. With that being said, you've been through the houses, mm -hmm. you've went through the scare zones, mm -hmm. you've avoided some scares, maybe got on some rides. Your stomach is growling. You Now you're wondering, what's the best time to eat? Probably not so much too early in the beginning, not too much in the end. That sweet spot, like that it's, perfect sweet spot. It's like a perfect spot. sweet spot. And it's almost around 10, 11 o'clock. You wouldn't say about nine o'clock? Well, would... get, you know what, going through the, you know what, you're right, 10, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. It's almost, yeah, yeah it's almost that. about 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Because everybody, they might have ate earlier. Mm -hmm. They have did their bid in the lines. We've done both. We, last year we went to the Chucky's booth, probably super early, it was still light outside. That line yeah. was long. Yeah. Those chicken nuggets, popcorn chicken nuggets were fire. Fire. Really good. Magnifique. We went, Delicious. We went kind of towards the, the middle, not even the middle, like kind of, it was dark at that point, so it had to probably be like eight-ish, nine-ish. Yeah, I think the earliest we've been at a food booth was that Last of Us booth, and that was probably around, yeah, I think you, like 7.30, 8 o'clock at the latest for the Last of Us yeah. Uh, booth. Yeah, but sometimes, yeah. Yeah, and that line was atrocious. Waiting Ridiculous. for that food was insane. Yes. So keep that in mind, because you, you don't want to take too much time away from doing everything, but you want to enjoy these delicious foods. Absolutely. The treats this year are going to be insane. I'm calling it. The Even though they didn't announce anything, it's just the, just the simple fact that they're keeping a tight leash on this. Yes. Oh, I'm so ready. Yes, we definitely know probably about one or two mm -hmm. like different dishes. We know about the beets dish for yes. sure at the Dia de los Muertos booth. Who thought I couldn't say that, did you? <laughs> Had to do show shrug. <laughs> thought I couldn't say that, huh? Every time I speak Spanish, I gotta. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> thought I couldn't say it. So I don't think I'll be trying that. That'll be Chubb here. I don't like beets. Um, More for me. Go ahead. The, there's also going to be the world famous pizza fries. I know we've talked about we're going to oh Finnegan's. Yeah. So definitely don't miss that. Yeah. And be be at least a yeah. little bit mindful. At some point they do kind of run out of ingredients. I experienced yeah. that last year. I don't want to talk about the walking taco. We already talked about it. We're not going to bring it up. I <laughs> guess you was highly upset. Highly upset. Yeah. But don't forget to check out, check out these delicious eats. The mm -hmm. treats are gonna be good. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys about the beverages. Of course, you can get your, your drinks at the bars. There's yes. numerous bars that are gonna be there this year. A few different locations. I know that there's one that they're gonna always have behind Lombard last year. That was the Peacock Bar. Yes. And so we were able to see David Pumpkins. That was my first time seeing him. Mm -hmm. Then, there's going to be one right behind Transformers, and I think there's going to be one. Yes. I want to call it Battery Park. Yes, that is it. Battery Park. That's that's where the one is uh, by Transformers. That's what's called Battery Park. But there's a big one over there, as yes. well as the one right behind Transformers and the Transformers. Oh, game. right, so right, that's right. Three right yes. off the top. But not to mention that the food booths also have their own yes. drinks there, and you can get a blinky cup almost anywhere. But how you fill it. It's up to you. All the bars are full service. Definitely delicious drinks. Don't miss your beat. Because yes. you're going to need that liquid courage. I know I sure do. And that's another pro tip. If, if if you are overwhelmed going throughout the night and you need just like that little, you know, oomph <laughs> to your... Uh, Pep yeah, to your um, step. I, yeah, exactly what she said. <laughs> Go drink some alcohol. That pretty much wraps up the food booth portion. Mm -hmm. Don't miss your beat. That's all I gotta say. I'm yes. gonna leave it at that. Don't miss your beat. What do you think should be next? What else should they do? 
Honestly, at this point, okay, we went through the scare zones, you've been going through the houses, and you know, you've been hitting up the food booths. Of course, when you're hitting up the food booths, you've been sitting down, relaxing a little bit, but say for instance, your feet are still dead, or you, you a little bit still getting on the tender side. Look. So to combat that, but still enjoy your evening, Hit up the uh, Nightmare, what's it called? Nightmare Fuel, which is the uh, show, pyro how you say it? Pyrotechnic type show yeah. with acrobatic movements. Yes, not suitable for children, so just keep it that in mind. But in years past, the regular show times have been 8 o'clock, 9.30, 11, and 12.30. It can, you know, fluctuate, you know, this year, but it's a very good way to, you know, rest your feet, enjoy a great show. Me and her personally have not been, but we plan on going this year. Cause again, mm -hmm. last year we didn't have a chance to go cause we was only there for two nights. But yes, take some time in your evening to definitely check out the show. Based off what we've seen on YouTube, it's a very good show. Get to relax your feet and just to take a breather. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. This year's theme is like a nocturnal circus. Yes. And seeing how they've been building on it, the little glimpses we can see from the different content creators just mm -hmm. taking those glances over. Yes. It looks like it's going to be something for the books. So after you've done all that, if you're a true Wizarding World fan and you may have already dipped your toe into Gringotts during the night, you ran into the Death Eaters. I'm super yeah. excited that the Death Eaters are making their return back to HHN. I'm not. Why not? Mrs. I want to have on a Gryffindor backpack on and get chased around Diagon Alley. Let's just talk oh, about... Babe, babe, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> okay, first of all, can we just talk about the simple fact that, that she has no wand? Look at my wand! Be thankful it's not your neck. I have no wand on me, I'm out here. Like nothing. All she has is a wing and a prayer. I got these hands. <laughs> what is that going to do? Well, I mean, if he hits you with one, he just walked right past us, didn't he? Right, he did. We got to get out of here. Right. Don't act startled. I was getting ready to snatch that backpack and throw it. I was under. I'm like, look, we, I, was I don't under, want no smoke I was with under anybody. Attack. My house, my name, my Gryffindor pride was on the line. I ain't had no wine, no nothing, Jesus. Exactly. It's okay. This year, I'm going to have my wand. I saw so many people out there dueling with the Death Eaters yes. that I feel like that was a missed opportunity for me. About a cadaver. And I, I need that one in my life. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just got to get that one off. I really need to. Absolutely. But yeah, it, that is a great way to go check out the Death Eaters uh, as well. You know, we, we feel like it's a must. It's a must. But do be kind of like mindful that the show isn't continuous. They're not out the entire night, probably very sporadic. Mm -hmm. So when they come out, I hope that you're there to see the beginning and the end. It's, it's a show. It's a show. It's a show. It's the best show probably I've seen. That's fair. Yes. That's, that's fair. That's fair. They really, the scare actors really get into it. Mm -hmm. And you can really tell that they really love their craft and what they do. It's, it's phenomenal. 10 out of 10. It's a must. It's a must. Now to wrap this up, mm -hmm. give you guys a little bit of, you know, the, the secret secret. <laughs> this is the real big secret. So, of course, we, we get to HHN. We don't know where all the houses are. Mm -hmm. We kind of don't really know where the scare zones are either. We like to follow this group on X, formerly known as Twitter. Tweet. And they're called Horror Nightmares. Mm -hmm. And so Horror Nightmares make speculation maps throughout the year. Me and Chubb here like to go back and forth and guess while during the beginning stages which houses we think will be oh, there. Yeah. And it gets fun. It gets just to, fun. Just to speculate and like see like, well, you think Monstros is going to be here or you think Major Sweets is going to be here. It's pretty fun. Or in the beginning, we were really honestly just trying to guess what type of house it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So pretty much they just released their final map. I'm going to put it here. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to put it in the community 
post so you guys can go ahead and save it down so you can refer to it when you get to the park. It has the best outline of where they believe that the park, the houses will be in the park this year. Yes. It's kind of been accurate. Yes. It hasn't really failed us. It was spot on last year. Yes, I would say percentage wise, 85, 90. That's too low. It's at least 95. 95, okay. Because I don't think yeah. that anything was wrong. Actually, yeah, because they did not miss. They did not, not one bit. So, follow them on Twitter. Talent. And definitely check out the community post for that post so that you can refer to it when you get to the parks. And I guess, let's give you the honorable mentions. The stuff that didn't quite make it to the it's top. two of them. The stuff that didn't quite make it to the top of things that you know, but they're kind of options for you. Things yeah, that good options, yeah. Things that are kind of like almost essential, but not fully essential, but definitely would be kind of sad if you miss. So the first honorable mention is the Dead Coconut Club, which is featuring Blumhouse, and the Dead Coconut Club is located in um, City Walk. So. Last year, well, I said last year, this past Mardi Gras, we experienced the uh, the Cursed Coconut Club. 10 out of 10, definitely recommend because it was a lot of horror theme to it, even though it was like Mardi Gras on top of that. Yeah. It was, you definitely got to hit up the Dead Coconut Club. So uh, one of the uh, set designers, um, Jeremy, put out this tweet and said, don't knock it until you try it. You're going to love the scenic in here. You'll see a bunch of nods to your favorite vampire movies and some throwbacks to your favorite HHN vamps. Team members, you'll be the first to experience this on HHN team member preview. Come pregame responsibly. Responsibly. Keep I am it. so excited for that. Like we, so that's, if you can squeeze it in there, I know it's a lot, mm -hmm. but if you can squeeze it in there, you're going to want to do it. I know for sure. I want to go to the Dead Coconut Club. I'm excited to see what's going to be in there with these vampire references. Maybe like year. the Lost Boys. Come with us, Michael. I haven't seen that movie yet. I think that's on the list this weekend. It is on the list. 10 out of 10 movie. Abigail? Abigail, because it's a Blumhouse film. Yes. Definitely. I don't know what other Blumhouse characters that they'll have in there roaming, but mm. this could be one for the books. Blumhouse has had a major hand in this year's HHN, it seems like. Yes, I second that. Even I was shocked, like, good God. Are, they all, are, you, are you all funding this? I mean, Blumhouse had a big year. They had a lot of movies come out. Yeah, so I yeah. guess trying to find ways to integrate it into the park this year, yeah. you needed to have multiple options. Mm -hmm. And they didn't restrict themselves just to one house, which is kind of awesome. That was smart too. Yeah. To have multiple houses, that way you have multiple, like every every film has like his own like personal fan base. Yeah. So the simple fact that they are able to encompass like different movies, that's really, really cool. Yes. Really, I'm really super cool. excited to see how all of this unfolds when we get to HHN. Yes. I have to say the next honorable mention, the Tribute Store. We all know that the Tribute Store is the place where you go to grab the merch. Yeah. It's so well designed. It's brought together so beautifully. It reflects pretty much how beautiful horror can be. Yes. You can go there and get, if you didn't make it during the day or if you're only there for one day, just maybe take a few moments out your day to go in there, grab the merch that you want, yes. and go about your day. Continue on with the rest of your life. In your rest of your life. <laughs> that felt so good. Continue on with the rest of your night. Enjoy your fun. Maybe put your merch on. You might have a little boo on you. Because I know I'm getting a little boo popcorn bucket. Oh like, I'm probably going to get a little boo shoulder handle. I'm going to get. I need it all. I'm going to get some shirts. I'm really trying to deck us out for Halloween Horror Nights this year. It's going to be. Swipe. Cash. Yeah, Carl said he got it for us. Say what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to wrap this all up in a nice pretty package, this were, these were just some tips that we used to survive the night. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you were able to take something from this 
And you can also add on. If you have some additional ideas and yes. you've been to Halloween Horror Nights below, yes. drop it in the comments. Because trust me, we will, we read it and we take all suggestions. We are not perfect whatsoever. We are not. This is our second time going. We're just hoping that to share some of our mistakes and what we learned yes. and improve on that. Mm -hmm. So we hope to see you guys in the fog. Don't forget to change your socks midway through the event. And pack your patient pants. And pack your patient pants. Because throughout the night, it's going to get good. It's going to get scary. And spooky. And wild. <laughs> the things we have seen last year. But thanks, guys, for watching. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.